In this session, we're going to use this simple balance cantilever model to look at the construction table facility. But before I do that, I just want to look at the attributes. Now in this model, we're using thick beam elements, BMI 21. I could have used the quadratic BMI 31. Now these elements were released in version 15, but had limited nonlinear capabilities. They've been enhanced in version 15.1, and now fully support geometric and material nonlinearity. So the elements for choice for beam elements for doing nonlinear problems. I'm also going to look at the deactive control. Now the inactive line control can be changed. This was introduced in 15. Now I could have used fixed. Fixed keeps the inactive elements in the position they were drawn. I could use horizontal. Horizontal basically keeps the elements horizontal. And typically for a construction like this, that would be called hinged cast. Or in this example, we use tangent. So here the elements are added at the ends of the cantilevers tangentially. Now, typically for this type of example, I would refer to that as matched cast. So tangent is the one that we're going to use for this example. Now, I've already run the model, so I'm going to load up my results. And you can see there a bending moment diagram for the last stage. I'm going to go back to the top and set active the last increment of stage one. Here are the columns, there's the pier. Now we have increments in this model because we're using a creep analysis. There's stage two, and if I set active stage three, you can see I'm adding segments. Now I'm going to go to the animation wizard for the load cases and I'm going to use the last increment of each load case to create an animation. And what this will do is show the segments being added each side and the bending moment changing as I do that. Now down here, I, using the controls, I can slow the animation down if I want, and I could save this as an AVI. But in this case, I'm just going to close it down so I can look at the construction control facility. Okay. I'm now going to switch off my bending moment diagram. So I'm going to go to layers, diagrams, double click, on off. I'm going to hold the P key down to drag a box around here to select the points. Now I've renumbered these points 1 to 15 and 101 to 115. And that's so when I look at my construction table, I can look at the point numbers and know exactly where that point lies within the construction. Okay, so let me create a construction table, bridge, construction table. Now the construction table of facility is here. Now I can report on a camber table to target a stage, a displacement history, or incremental displacements. Now those can be done for the whole analysis or just specified load cases. Now here we're gonna do the whole analysis, a camber table to target stage 27. Here is my camber table. Now the numbers that we're getting are the numbers I need to add to the construction drawings to achieve a zero value at the end of the analysis. Now I'm just going to change the number of decimal places to three. And once I've done that, I'm going to look more closely at one of the numbers. So here at point number three, it's telling me the end of the segment needs to be set 52 millimeters above the datum zero to achieve a zero value at the end of the analysis. Now, as the construction progresses, I get more data for the points. Now down here at point 15, it's telling me I need to set that point 497 millimeters above the datum to achieve a zero value at the end of the analysis. Now, interestingly, point 15 goes negative at a stage here because the left-hand stage moves upwards when I add a segment to the right-hand stage. And that stage would be over here that I'm adding it in. Now, the key thing is if I look down here, the end of stage 27, I end up with zero values. So the whole thing is designed to give me a flat structure by using these pre cambers on the construction table. Okay, I'm just going to look at another type of construction table. So bridge construction table. And here I'm going to look at incremental displacements. 
Now the incremental displacement table is useful because these are the numbers that I can actually go and measure on site and check whether the actual construction is progressing in the same way the analysis predicts. So by looking at the actual values I have on site, I can tell whether the analysis and construction are marrying together.